What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in this video, I wanted to talk about some of the best functions and uses of the push-pull tool. Before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to give you a start to finish, easy to follow training that helps you get started with SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you want a little bit more in-depth training on SketchUp, make sure you check out that link at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the first function is one of the functions that uh, basically I think everyone, or just about everyone uses the push-pull tool for. And one of the great things about it is this tool is really great for push-pulling connected faces. And so like for example, Right now, if I was to go through and I was to push pull one of these walls in this floor plan, you can see how all of the connected faces get push pulled in this object. So for right now, that means basically just this wall and then this big long wall. But if I was to come in here and I was to erase these extra lines in here so that this is one big connected face, you could push pull your entire floor plan using just the push pull tool in a single click. As long as the surface is flat and continuous, you can use the push-pull tool to extrude basically any object you want as long as the surfaces are continuous. Function two is the ability to cut a hole in an object using the push-pull tool. So one of the built-in features of the push-pull tool is it, give, it really gives you the ability it gives you the ability to cut a hole in an object as long as the faces are parallel to each other. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to push-pull an opening into this wall. So you can see how I drew a window opening onto this wall. Well, if I push-pull this to this back face so that it's parallel with this back face, you can see how SketchUp is automatically going to cut a hole within that object. And so because of that, you can use this to quickly and easily create openings within the wall. So another one of the great functions of the push-pull tool is the ability to use inferencing. So let's say, for example, that I was to push pull this door and I wasn't really able to find the back side of this wall in order to cut this opening. The nice thing about the push pull tool is it automatically goes into inferencing mode, meaning that basically wherever I move my mouse, this is going to inference to whatever I put my mouse over. So in this case, in order to cut this hole in this wall, I have to push pull this so that it's parallel with the back wall. Well, what I could do is I could just mouse over this line anywhere along this line in order to do this. And this will automatically inference to whatever thickness this point is at. So you can see how I can easily move this to, this to the back side of the wall. So another use for this is this could be really good for setting heights of different objects. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to extrude this box to be the same height as this object. I could use the push-pull tool to click on this face, and then I could move my mouse over the top of this object, and you can see how I can easily inference this so that this has the same height as this other object within your model. Another great function of this tool is the ability to precisely push-pull objects. So for example, if I was to come in here, and let's say I had a circle, let's say I wanted to draw this to be 10 feet tall, what I could do is I could come in here, I could activate the push-pull tool and cl click on this face, and then I can type in a value and push-pull this to that length. So if I type in a value of 10 feet with this tool active, SketchUp is going to push-pull this object 10 feet. So you can easily come in here and precisely push-pull things to different lengths. So in addition to being able to cut holes and add geometry using the push-pull tool, you can also use this to remove geometry. So let's say, for example, that I had something like a house over here and I wanted to create a roof. Well, what I could do is I could come in here and I could draw a pair of lines along this face and then I could use the push-pull tool to remove this geometry on the top. So you don't just need to use this to add geometry, you can also use it to remove geometry. And again, see that I'm using the same function that this uses with the uh, with the hole cutting option. So as long as I push pull this to a surface on the back that's parallel to my original face, you can see how SketchUp deletes out this geometry. So you can also use this tool to remove geometry as well as add it. So a function of the push pull tool that a lot of people aren't aware of is the ability to use it in create new face mode. So right now, as a default, if I come in here and I push pull this box, you can see how it's creating new geometry. And if I click here, then it's gonna set this new geometry. And then if I run the push-pull tool again, it's gonna move this face 
up or down in the default mode. However, you can also activate create new face mode by tapping the control key. You can see how if I tap the control key, I get a little plus button next to my box. Well now, if I click, this will create a completely new face instead of moving your existing face. So this allows you to come in here and basically create whole new sets of geometry off to the side without moving your existing geometry. And this can be especially useful if you're going to do something like use the scale tool in order to modify an object. So let's say for example that I drew a cylinder, I tap the control key, and then I created a new face here and a new face here. Well now I could come in and I could modify these lines within this object without modifying the other lines in the model. And that wouldn't be possible if I didn't use create new face mode because it would only create one new face. And so I wouldn't have that geometry in here to select. So another great function of the push pull tool and really a lot of the tools in SketchUp is the ability to double click to repeat the last function that you used. So in this case, let's say that I was to push pull this cylinder to a height of eight feet. So, and let's say I wanted to push pull these to the exact same height. Well, if I was to come in here and instead of having to extrude each one of these separately by clicking once and then moving over here and clicking again, I can just double click. And when I double click, basically this tool remembers the last length of the last push pull that you did. So you can use this to quickly come in here and extrude a bunch of different objects to the same height by just double clicking. So one limitation of the push-pull tool is you can't use it to push-pull curve surfaces. So let's say for example that I created an object in here with an arc and I extruded it up. You're not going to be able to push-pull anything on this surface because this is a curved or smooth surface. And so because of that, this doesn't have the functionality in order to do that. You can download an extension called Joint Push-Pull that will allow you to push-pull a curved surface. However, one thing you can do is you can come in here and you can cut a hole in an object using the push-pull tool. So let's say, for example, that I was to draw a rectangle and let's say I wanted to use this rectangle to cut a hole in this object. So you can't move this onto this face and then have this merge and push pull through like we did over here on our flat face because the faces aren't parallel. So you're not going to be able to do this in the same way that we were able to cut a hole in an object. But what you can do is you can push pull this object all the way through the object that you want to put the hole in. And then you can select this, right click, and go down to intersect faces and select intersect faces with model. And basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna intersect all of these different faces and create different geometry in here. So you can see how these are separate and this has been kind of cut using this object. Well now you can come in here and you can delete out the object on this side. And you can delete out the object on this side and then you can come in here and you can delete out these two faces that were created. And now what you have is you have this remaining geometry in here that was created when you used intersect faces with model. So you can use this to cut openings in curved faces even though you can't push pull curved faces within SketchUp. So another strategy that's been kind of making the rounds lately is the ability to use negative push pull in order to push pull multiple multiple profiles at once. So big thank you to Dave Edwards for pointing this out to me and also to SketchUp for uh, popularizing this trick. So they basically created a, they used a video showing how to use the follow me tool in order to do this. But one of the things you can't do at the moment is you can't push pull multiple different profiles at one time. So like for example, if I wanted to push pull, like let's say a box here, a Pentagon here, and then a circle here, you can't do that because you can't use the push pull tool on multiple objects at once. You can see how that came in here and that deselected this. So what you could do instead though is you could figure out where you wanted your object to be push pulled to and you could draw a cube just like this. And then you could come in here and you could draw these faces on here or draw these objects on here in the areas where you'd like for them to be extruded. Now, what you could do is you could come in and you could push pull this face backwards 
so that it's level with this back face so this deletes out. So you can see I was able to use the negative properties or the properties of removing objects in here in order to create these different extruded, extruded profiles all at once. Alternatively, you could also use the extension joint push-pull which allows you to push-pull multiple different objects at one time. You can also use the push-pull tool in conjunction with hidden geometry. So like we talked about, you can't push-pull curved or smooth surfaces using the push-pull tool. You can see how this won't let me do anything with this sphere or with this cylinder. However, if you go up to view and turn on your hidden geometry, what you can do is you can come in here and push-pull the individual faces inside your hidden geometry. So um, as a lot of you know, basically the way that curved surfaces are made up in SketchUp is they're really just a series of flat faces that are broken up by hidden geometry in order to create that curved surface. Well, when you turn hidden geometry on, you can come in here, you can select each one of those individually. And so what you can do is you can push pull these individually in order to create some kind of cool and interesting different shapes. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Um, do you have any ways for using the push-pull tool that I didn't mention? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.